First, we'll start with CubTech. And CubTech, as you see here, is a uh, corresponds to medical imaging. And it's a minority woman-owned company that was founded in Stratford, Connecticut in 2005 and is a progressive research and technology company dedicated to developing 3D tomosynthesis solutions for precision breast, care, uh, breast cancer margin management. They design world-class innovative patented and proprietary 3D specimen imaging and surgical margin management systems for the OR, pathology lab, and biopsy suite. And, you know, forgive me, I'm sure everyone knows, but those kind of things, when you're doing your definitive surgery, that is your one shot to hopefully be, you know, saved or spared of a malignancy, that stuff matters. It's the margins, it's the micrometastatic disease you can't see, and you get one shot. And that's how it that makes it not a now, you know, uh, metastatic recurrence. So I'm very interested to hear about this. And with uh, no further ado, uh, Vikram, thank you for being here. Thanks, Sanjay. Um, so we are a minority woman-owned company. I've actually worked for my wife for 28 years, but um, 19 years um, reporting to her in the company. Um, I'm just gonna go to the start of this. So this is how important this subject is. Um, ARPA H, uh, what uh, uh, I think uh, was set up last year by the present government, uh, they have an entire program or a project dedicated to uh, improving um, surgery outcomes. And uh, the funny thing is I was at a conference and I walked up to, the, to ask a question and the head of that uh, uh, program was one of the panel members and I asked a question and she goes, I know you, you're Vikram, you make the Mozart. I was like, wow. So um, it, it's always good to know that, I mean, when, especially when you start and you'll hear a little bit about what we do, um, that you get recognized. Um, so this is who we are. Uh, this is our mission. Our focus is uh, making life-changing differences for cancer patients. And uh, our goal is to be recognized as a global leader in uh, transforming cancer. Um, this is uh, a little bit of the systems uh, that we do. Um, everything from preclinical research across the spectrum to uh, products used in pathology and the OR to look at excised tissue, bone, organs, uh, when they've just been excised from the body. Um, we are located in Stratford, Connecticut. Um, 100% owned by my wife and me, my wife with me hanging around her. Um, we do have two business units, clinical and scientific, and just short of 100 people. Uh, a, a quick uh, um, kind of history. We've consistently uh, come out with new products. Uh, my background, I'm not an engineer by education. Uh, before I started the company, I used to work for a company that was a subcontractor to the DOD. Uh, I was mentioning to Ralph last night over dinner, I was involved in some cool projects uh, tied to the first stealth bombers and uh, other stuff that I can't talk about, but uh, uh, I worked with digital x-ray before they came out in medicine. And uh, when I was out of a job, I didn't know what to do. So um, I called some local hospitals and uh, a, um, a hospital that was less than five miles away from me uh, the director of radiology said, I'm new, just called purchasing. I called purchasing. The guy met with me. They were looking for one machine. They bought two machines. They gave me an order for 150,000 with a check for 37,500. I had to run to incorporate the company, open a bank account, deposit the check, delivered the first machine in, in four months and the rest is history. Um, so, uh, this is the story of breast cancer, right? I'm sure everybody is familiar. One in eight women in the U.S. Uh, get breast cancer. Uh, 6%, that is a very important number. More and more women or human beings between 20 and 30 are starting to get breast cancer. Um, a number that you won't see here, 54% uh, of 
all women and 89% of women under Medicare will have complications if they have to go back for a second surgery. That's how bad it is to go back for a second surgery. And the goal is the breast is one of the organs that you don't need to take the entire breast out if somebody has cancer. You want to take out as little as possible while making sure that you don't leave anything behind. Um, the average in the US is 20 to 35 percent of patients have to go back for a second surgery. And there's surgeons in this room, but in complete honesty, if you ask a surgeon, they'll say, yes, that's true, but it isn't me. It's the other guys in the, in the group. And we can't make a bad surgeon a good surgeon, but our goal is to make a good surgeon's job easier, faster, more efficient, and to reduce the cost of the surgery on the hospital. Because women decide where the family goes for care. So if you treat a breast cancer patient well, most likely her family is going to be your customers for life for the hospital. Um, on average, uh, a surgery, a reexition costs a hospital about $16,000. That's almost a billion dollars in cost in the US alone. Um, and like I said, 54% of commercial and 89% of Medicare patients have complications in a re-excision. Um, so, so just do a quick calculation. Uh, typical regional hospital does about 200 cases a year. That is about four breast cancer surgeries a week. Um, it's 40. Um, so if you re the re-excisions are 40 at 20%, 20% is like being very, very generous. On an average, it's higher. Um, that's $16,000 per surgery, $640,000. We have publications that show that our product reduces the re-excision re rate by up to 50%. So that's a savings of $320,000 per year for a hospital. Over the, the, the life of our system, that's about in seven years, that's $2.24 million. The cost of our system is 240,000. So the savings to a hospital is $2 million right off the bat if they use our product in their OR. And this is what it does. It, it, um, so on an, I mean, I think majority of women, when they go for a mammogram, they go for a 3D mammogram anymore. So what is a 3D mammogram? When you look at the breast, it does one millimeter slices, as you see on the screen, through the breast. And so if there is something that is close to the edge, in a one millimeter margin, you can see exactly where the cancer is close to the edge. This becomes more and more important today as against 30 years ago when women didn't go in for a surgery till they felt something. And at that point, it was so late. The doctor would pretty much take out the entire uh, um, breast and say, just be happy you're alive and go home. Well. There is early screening now. Women go in a lot earlier. The cancer is found a lot earlier. And the doctor has to focus on making sure they take the entire cancer out while uh, uh, protecting the cosmesis, giving them um, just better self-worth, better quality of life. And that's where our product becomes very critical. Um, we have publications from MD Anderson, UT Southwestern, Rush University in Chicago, just to name a few. Um, we're doing a lot of uh, um, uh, social media and uh, um, awareness directly to patients. In 2022, we ran an ad campaign in the New York Times. In 2023, um, in the month of October, we were in um, Times Square. Um, the lady's uh, picture you see over here is um, runs a salon, a hair salon in Canada. Um, and when they heard about our product, she got together with four of her friends in her community and they ran a social media campaign to collect money to buy the machine for their hospital. She's a breast cancer survivor. The four of them were breast cancer survivors. They collected money. We gave them discounts to match whatever they could uh, generate in funds and they were able to get a system 
for the local hospital and she became a YouTube star or whatever, Facebook star after this. Um, just to give you an idea, um, over the years, uh, this is where we are in the US. We are both in Tulane and in Oxnard uh, among some of the hospitals in the country and um, around the world. We're in uh, 30 countries, over 30 countries around the world, all across Europe and growing. Um, we have a collection of over 20 patents and growing. Um, this is, uh, I want to show you this to give you an idea of what exactly we do. We have a patent that we can superimpose the x-ray image and the optical, optical image, kind of like Superman. You, it gives you Superman vision for the surgeon. Uh, you find the exact location of the cancer. It's 22 millimeters deep. Now, surgeons don't go to school to study x-ray. They don't go to school to be radiologists. Our goal is to make that image as easy as possible for the surgeon so they can focus on what they do best. And this is an example of how we do it for the surgeon. Um, growth. This is what we are. Um, so it's been 18 years. We've uh, grown to where we are uh, on um, zero um, investments, private investments. Of course, uh, we've uh, built buildings with SBI loans, and I'll share a little bit about that. But we feel like we're at a point now where we're ready to really take off. We have a lot of ideas. We have a lot of brand recognition. We have strong community relations with surgeons, with researchers. So I just want to share with you a little bit about what we're doing. Um, this is where we are with our commercial team, um, market penetration in the US. We have partnerships with GE, with Siemens, with uh, Sakura Fine Tech in pathology, with Mamatome in uh, radiology, which are leaders in their domains. Um, and they uh, don't want to get into doing what we're doing. And we leverage that relationship to get in front of more people. Um, so we're already in breast. That's our strength. And this is where else we're already working. We're working with some of the top hospitals, Mayo, MD Anderson, Sloan Kettering. We're developing solutions with our technology in these other cancer states. Um, and a lot of exciting things happening. Um, we are in AI. AI is the new electricity. 3D is the future of imaging. Uh, we're working on AI. Again, the goal is that the surgeon doesn't need to worry about finding the cancer. They should focus on doing the best they can to take it all out. With AI, our goal is to find the cancer and tell the surgeon exactly where the cancer is so that they know the first time they got it all right so that they don't need to worry about a re-excision. Um, Dr. Corsetti, I, I'll, I'll let him tell you his re-excision rate, how low, close to uh, zero it is. Um, and uh, it's because he's a great surgeon, but uh, hopefully our technology is helping him, helping him do even better with it. Um, last year, we um, set up a company in India this is a shocking number. 37% of women in India succumb to breast cancer. 37%. And the US is 12%. There is a tsunami coming of breast cancer, not just in India, but in that part of the world. Because they are, where they are is, women are told when you feel something, that's when you come in. And by that time, it's stage three or stage four cancer. And I'm, we're focusing on India. No, no, no awards for guessing why, but um, our growth from there is all across the Middle East, East Asia, and Africa, what they call the Global South. I mean, in the Middle East, I don't know if you saw um, in the earlier graph, but we're at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, we're at MD Anderson, we're in Qatar, Kuwait, um, UAE, Saudi Arabia. So the people who have the money and understand the need, I've been invited by Saudi Arabia to come and meet with their um, royal uh, advisory group to focus on breast cancer. So 
there's a lot of stuff that's going on. Um, the goal is uh, to try to leverage and grow exponentially um, off of where we are. We acquired a company in 22 out of Spain and moved the manufacturing of the gamma probe from uh, Spain to the US. And starting this year, we're going to be manufacturing that product in Connecticut. We've already started selling that in 10 countries and uh, growing fast. So having said that, um, this is what we're doing. I just want to show you a little bit about why we feel so strongly that we're going to be successful at what we do, just to give you a flavor of who we are. So uh, from 2005 to 2015, we were in this warehouse. I started out of my spare bedroom um, and we took about a hundred square foot space in this warehouse. By 2015, I was uh, renting the entire warehouse and the guy who I was renting from, we had flipped and he was renting a small space for me now in this space. Um, in 2016, I hired a head of marketing uh, out of Covidian and he said, this is not a medical space. You want to move into a real medical building. So we rented this space in 2016. We bought it in 2018. And three months after we bought it, this is what happened. Um, there was a fire on a Sunday. Uh, uh, there was a propane tank on a fork truck that uh, the lithium ion battery sparked and uh, the building burnt down. But we didn't lay off a single person. This happened in September of 2018, and then COVID happened in 2019. But in 2021, we moved into this building. We built a brand new building, the same exact same space, twice the size, very Google-esque uh, to attract. Nobody wants to come to Connecticut. Everybody wants to go to New York City. So we had to make it special to get people to come and work for us in Connecticut. So we did that. And this we moved into this building in 2021. And now we're building a brand new building to add to it. In three years, we've outgrown the space and we're building a, we actually gonna be breaking ground in March and moving in next year uh, for our 20th anniversary. This is, go, we're, uh, it's gonna be all production. So we're tripling our manufacturing space. Uh, that's how confident we are about our future and uh, the technology and the growth of the company and, uh, Unfortunately, the, the presence of, ca of cancer in our lives that uh, we're investing in this. So having said that, uh, I will uh, just move back to the ad we were running in uh, uh, Times Square um, uh, in October, um, which talks about the horror of finding out you go through breast cancer surgery the first time, and then you find out that you need to go back in again. Um, there is no feeling worse than that. Um, thank you very much.